Since I started my career in machine learning, I have worked hard to automate every aspect of my work. For me, if I couldn't develop a fully production-ready machine learning model, at the click of a button, I was doing something wrong. I find it funny how you can recognize a senior machine learning engineer by how little he is working to achieve the same results as a junior one, working 10 times as hard. AutoML has always been a subject dear to my heart, and I wanted today to talk about how we should approach the model optimization problem from an automation standpoint. I don't want to talk about a specific algorithm or another one. I want to address high level, what are the different angles we should consider when thinking about building an AutoML pipeline. And I want to show you a basic example of a pipeline. Let's get into it. When we talk about AutoML, the idea is to automate the process of model selection. The concept of automation is very close to the concept of abstraction. The idea is that we can modularize and abstract away the complexity of some aspect of the training process and utilize optimization processes to make sure that we can automate the whole process. When we talk about model selection, we mean searching for the optimal model for specific training data. So let's say we have some features X and we have a target Y. What is the optimal transformation that takes us from X to Y? So you can think about a machine learning model and all the aspects of optimization that relates to training a model as a transformation from a set of features to the target that we're trying to predict. The term optimal implies that we have a model performance metric and the optimal model is the one that maximizes that metric. So when we talk about optimizing, there are different axes that we can consider within the concept of model optimization. So I'm going to define the main axis that we can optimize when we talk about model optimization. The first aspect, the one that we talk about first, is a model parameter space. So when we talk about model parameter, we kind of assume that there's a parameterized model, which is not always the case. For example, XGBoost is not a parameterized model. There's no parameters that we optimize, like in logistic regression, for example. But I'm going to use this term to characterize the concept of statistical learning. So this is a space that we optimize when we train a model through statistical learning. The parameters are learned using an optimization principle, such as maximum likelihood estimation principle, or loss minimization. Again, I'm talking about the concept of parameters in that case in an abstract manner. Not all models have parameters to optimize. So for example, in XGBoost, we optimize the learning of the trees by using a loss function that we were minimizing. And we were building the trees by finding the optimal splits using an optimization principle. Let's now talk about the model paradigm space. Many supervised learning algorithms could be used to solve the same problem. Algorithms like Naive Bayes, XGBoost, or neural networks could perform very differently depending on the specific dataset. So when we are trying to find the optimal transformation from the features to the target, we could want to find the best model paradigm to do so. So this is one axis to consider when we talk about model selection. So we could try to solve the same problem using logistic regression, a decision tree, or a neural network. And not all the models will perform the same on the same data. So what will be the best model for the specific learning task? We can consider the axis of hyperparameter, so the hyperparameter space. Those are the model parameters that we cannot optimize using statistical learning, but they are choices that we need to make when we train a model. So typically, we are trying to find the optimal hyperparameters by trying to minimize the underfitting and the overfitting. So trying to find the sweet spot where the model does not underfit and does not overfit as well. For example, when we looked at XGBoost, we had a couple of hyperparameters. Gamma was a hyperparameter that controls the number of leaves in the trees. Lambda was a hyperparameter that controlled how much gradient versus curvature we were minimizing. We can consider the concept of model architecture space. This is more relevant for neural networks. The model architecture can be characterized by a set of hyperparameters, but it tends to be a more complex search than typical hyperparameters. So for example, let's consider this neural network here. We could imagine that a more optimal model could be that we remove a couple of neurons or we remove a couple of other neurons in a different configuration. And the number of configuration can be extremely high. We could look at neurons, but we could also look at computational blocks. So imagine that we have a neural network with many conventional layers 
and there might be a more optimal organization of those convolutional layers. So for example, we could have a neural network that could have a similar architecture, but we would remove some of the layers to make it more optimal. When we talk about the model architecture space, what would be the optimal architecture when we choose the model paradigm neural network? We can consider the concept of feature space. We also need to select the right features to feed our model. Different models will react differently depending on the features we use. Too many features and we may overfit, too few features and we may underfit. So depending on the specific model paradigm or the other characteristic of a model, we may have some optimal features that we may select. We can consider the concept of feature transformation. So there's a lot of transformations that we could do on the data to improve our model performance. So we could consider things like feature encoding or box cox transformation. So there's a lot of things that you could try on the data itself to improve the model performance. So those are six different axes that we can consider when we talk about model optimization. So optimizing a model has a lot of complexity to it and it's not only about the hyperparameters. So we need to consider all those different axes when we train models and when we automate the process of training a model. Considering the complexity of those different subspaces, it is often impractical to attempt to solve the problem exactly, and we need to find ways to select a suitable model quickly. The typical model optimization strategy is to optimize each axis separately in sequence. So we can modularize the different optimization problems and it makes it easier for multiple people or teams to work together. So let's look at a typical sequence of steps. So for example, we could start optimizing the feature transformation space. This allows a potential injection of new features before selecting the right feature space. We can then optimize the feature space. Now that the features are better because of the previous step, we can subset the best feature space. Then we can optimize the model paradigm space. Now that we have the right data, we can choose the right model. If the model paradigm chosen in the previous step is a neural network, we need to optimize its architecture. Depending on how much flexibility we allow in the search, it is often easier to optimize the architecture first and dependently from the hyperparameter search. Then we can optimize the hyperparameter space. Once we have a model paradigm and its architecture, it becomes easier to focus on the hyperparameters. And now that we did all of that, training the final model is going to be the last step. So optimizing in sequence, we result in a suboptimal model because we are approximating the search. The feature selection will select the best features in general, and the model paradigm module will determine the best model paradigm based on the features chosen in the previous step. But it is possible that we can find a model paradigm that would perform better had other features been selected. So it could be interesting to consider jointly optimizing different axes together. For example, it's not uncommon to jointly optimize the feature space and the architecture space. So let's consider this optimization problem in sequence. We have the feature transformations. We have the model paradigm selection. But we could consider optimizing together the feature search and the architecture search. And then we could continue the sequence with the hyperparameter search and the model training. So as always, with optimization problems, there's a balance between search accuracy and computational complexity. If we optimize in sequence, the search space is much smaller and it makes it easier to search it completely. If we start to joint optimize multiple axes together, the search space becomes much bigger and it is much more complex computationally. Many optimization processes have an iterative implementation and we can use this to design pseudo joint optimization processes. For example, the recursive feature elimination algorithm, RFE, is a typical feature selection techniques where genetic algorithms are often used for architecture search. Both methods are iterative and convert slowly to an optimal solution. So we could have an iterative process that is done in sequence. So for example, we could have the recurring feature elimination process that is done first, and then we have the genetic algorithm that is there to find the optimal architecture. But because they are iterative, we could do that together. So we could have one iteration of the recurring feature elimination algorithm, 
and one iteration of the genetic algorithm. The first one is there to optimize the feature set, and the second one is there to optimize the architecture. So we could have multiple iterations of optimizing first the feature set, then the architecture, optimizing further the feature set, optimizing further the architecture, etc. And we iterate until both spaces are optimized together to an optimal solution. <laughs>